Each season, new fashions hit the runway, and variations of these pieces quickly work their way into the social media scene, pushing people to buy the newest trend. It's a vicious cycle of consumerism, as many of these styles are short-lived and lose steam in a matter of months. But within this cycle, there are some designs that have withstood the test of time. From trench coats to stiletto heels, these long-lasting styles are found in millions of people's closets. So how did these pieces manage to stay in the limelight for so long? And why are some fashion crazes, on the other hand, so short-lived? I would say that the sort of cycle of trends has definitely sped up quite a lot over kind of like the last 10 years. I mean, I guess with the rise of digital culture and how everything is very much very immediate now, whereas maybe sort of 20 years ago, trends were slower because they came from the catwalk or the street and they sort of dripped down to what most people wore. In her book, Cochrane shares the long history of certain clothing pieces and how they've managed to stay in style over the decades. The fashion industry is ruthless, with a style in one season and out the next. Currently, there's a resurgence in several trends from the 80s and 90s, like narrow sunglasses, barely there tops, and wild prints. But who knows what next summer will bring? While the industry is a revolving door, there are some pieces that manage to never fade. One of these is the classic LBD, or little black dress. This style came into the limelight thanks to Coco Chanel in 1926. The little black dress before, or black dresses in general, before she kind of put them in one of her collections, were seen, they had lots of different connotations. They were, as we still see them now, they were part of mourning. But also, particularly in the States, I think, they were seen as very dowdy because they were kind of essentially the uniform for shop girls. So for sort of young working class women. And Chanel sort of noticed this very sort of austere dress. I think she saw them as part, which we still have today, they're as part of what maids wore in hotels. And so she, she always has had an eye for kind of taking something and giving it a kind of high fashion makeover, basically. Although radical at the time, the style of the little black dress quickly became a staple in fashion. It's a very diverse item, even if at the base of it, it's quite simple. So you can have them in all sorts of different, like, shapes, sizes, lengths, you know, styles. So, I mean, I must have about 10 little black dresses, and they're all kind of hugely different. Cochrane notes that the versatility of this style was seen in older advertisements and films. Take Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's, for instance. Hepburn is elegant and chic, wearing a classic black dress and oversized pearl necklace as she nibbles on a croissant and coffee. This portrayal in the film only furthered the popularity of the dress for decades to come. Even today, the LBD is a key feature in many modern wardrobes. And that's the beauty of the piece. It's easily adaptable. I talk about in the book about how you could actually have a kind of wardrobe of little black dresses because the same little black dress doesn't work for different occasions. So you might have one that you wear to go out for a night or you might have one that is kind of a good kind of fail-safe for a kind of difficult day at work. They have a kind of forever appeal, I think. In addition to high fashion, other producers within the industry created more casual pieces that left a similar lasting impact. These items, such as jeans and a white t-shirt, have been around for centuries. For example, take the introduction of the classic tee. The sort of roots of the white t-shirt are kind of in underwear, so there have been kind of t-shaped clothing from the medieval times that people would wear underneath their clothes to kind of, as a sort of hygiene thing, so they didn't have to um, wash the kind of ornate items they wore over the top. And as time went on, those t-shirts became kind of something more like we would recognize. The first kind of fashion moment for them was in the 50s when they became a kind of favored item of kind of young men, a sort of new generation of young male teenagers who saw them on their kind of icons like Sidney Poitier and Marlon Brando and James Dean. And because, again, they have a kind of subversiveness at that time because for their parents, for those kids' parents, that white t-shirt would have been seen as underwear. So for them to wear it out the house sort of by itself 
would have kind of raised eyebrows, which no doubt they were keen to do. And today, it's evolved past the blank canvas. Some people wear white t-shirts with slogans and artwork as a way to communicate a message they believe in or live by. You can just wear a blank one, or you can sort of wear one with exactly like a political statement on it, or the logo of your favorite band. And what that does is it's very much the sort of the most like direct way that fashion tells sort of passers by what you're interested in, who you are. I think all clothes do that all the time, but t-shirts with statements is the kind of most like direct way to do that. And people often pair their t-shirts with their favorite jeans. Did you know that the first pair was invented in 1873 by Levi Strauss and company? They were originally created as durable pants for working men. However, Cochran says that the t-shirt and jean look became a larger part of fashion culture in the 50s, when younger people started wearing them and never stopped. They're sort of just part of our sort of societal trends as much as kind of fashion trends. And I think as time went on, they just became so popular. And as people got older, they didn't stop wearing them. So it's a sort of something that people wear throughout their life. My dad, who's 73, still wears Levi's 501s, for example. They've just been taken up by generation after generation after generation, and everyone wears them. They say that on a given day, half the world's population is wearing jeans. Although there have been different iterations of the classic jean over the decades, Cochran says the design has stayed relatively the same. Some styles of Levi's are virtually identical to the originals from the 1880s. It's very striking as to how similar. I don't think they've got like a pair from 1873, which is when they were first painted it, but from like the 1880s, I think is the oldest one they've got. And if you see a picture of them, they look so similar to what we wear now. What's interesting, I guess, is that they were sort of a design classic from the get-go. Jeans, t-shirts, and little black dresses are only three of the 10 trends Cochrane explores in her book. She also touches on the first champion hoodie made in the 1930s and the rise of the scandalous miniskirt in the 1960s. Each timeless piece within this collection is unique and has managed to stay constant as American style evolves. To learn more about the history of fashion and our guest Lauren Cochran, read her book, The Ten, How and Why We Wear the Fashion Classics. You can also find more information and archives of past shows at viewpointsradio.org. This segment originally aired in August 2021 and was written by associate producer Bridget Killian. Our executive producer is Amira Saveri. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Viewpoints returns in just a moment. Coming up next week. The idea is simple. You put this together and then suddenly you have a car that receives this free fuel that falls from the sky. The increasing efficiency of solar energy. Then. What we're seeing right now in our classrooms in far too many states is where superintendents and school board members and governors and mayors are resorting to anybody in our classroom. The deepening nationwide teacher shortage as millions of students head back to school. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows and find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints.